It's Thursday, March 31st, and the HAN Cruiser is in Trumbull today, and we're taking a break from our FCAC Spring Tour to bring you the latest local news, including that authorities have identified a Seymour man who was found shot at his, as his house burned down around him on Wednesday morning. Deputy Chief Paul Setkowski said that 67-year-old Wallace Declan was found just inside the front door with a gunshot wound. The victim was treated at the scene, then brought to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Hearst, Connecticut media reports that it was not clear how Declan came by his bullet wound, but police were quick to offer reassurances that nobody else was in danger. Police did not say whether the cause of death was arson, homicide, or suicide. Later Wednesday, Setkowski said the circumstances of Declan's death were still unclear, but that the office of the chief medical examiner in Farmington would conduct an autopsy this morning. Fire Chief John Cronin Jr. said the house was a total loss and that it was difficult for firefighters to battle the blaze inside the house because of hoarding conditions. And in other news today, four men were arrested and charged with poaching in Shelton late Tuesday after the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection said they caught them with 38 striped bass, all of which were less than the minimum legal limit to keep a striper. The creel limit for striped bass is one per angler per day. Fish must be at least 28 inches long to be legally kept. The State Environmental Conservation Police, with the assistance of their canine unit, arrested 60-year-old Hydri Sinclair. Coley of Woodbury, 32-year-old Daniel Sincoli of Waterbury, 57-year-old Bilby Sincoli of Waterbury, and 46-year-old Garali Sincoli of Woodbury. Around 10 o'clock at night on Tuesday, March 29th, NCON police received an anonymous complaint of four anglers fishing in the Housatonic River off of River Road in Shelton who were in possession of a large quantity of the undersized striped bass. NCON officers located the anglers and with the help of their trained dog Ruger, discovered the 38 bass that were hidden in bags, in rocks, and in bushes. And in other news, if you see a low-flying helicopter in the sky this week, it's likely your power company. This week, Eversource is conducting aerial inspections of vegetation growing near its high-voltage electric lines in Connecticut. The work involves the use of a helicopter flying low over Eversource's transmission line corridors to check for any encroachment from trees or other plants. Steve Driscoll, Vice President of Operation Services, said that the helicopter inspections of the transmission lines are a crucial and effective effective part of their commitment to reducing the frequency and duration of power outages. The aerial inspections began today and weather permitting will continue through April 8th. They'll take place from 7 in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon, covering several towns that have Eversource as their service. And Easton, Reading, and Region 9 School Superintendent Thomas McMorrin urged parents with their children to talk to their children, rather, about how an inadvertent message, whether or not it was intended as a prank, can seriously disrupt the school day, precipitate police action, and lead to serious consequences for the student. McMorrin made his comments in response to the bomb scare at Helen Keller Middle School on the morning of March 23rd that prompted school officials and Easton police to relocate the student to the Easton Community Center while police and canines searched for a possible bomb. In this case, graffiti on the wall of a boy's bathroom that hadn't been there the night before when the room was cleaned triggered the response. No bomb was found and the students were cleared to return to their classes, but not without seriously interrupting the school day and alarming students, staff, parents, and the community. There's much more on that story at EastonCourier.com. But that does it for your Coffee Break Morning News. Check back later at HAN.network for more and follow all the action of the Spring FCAC Tour on Twitter at HAN Network CT.